Hey everyone, welcome to Lizzie's Little Library and the Newberry Project. Today's book is the 1966 winner called I, Juan de Pareja by Elizabeth Wharton de Trevino. What is immediately interesting and noteworthy about this book is it is the second consecutive book that not only takes place in Spain, but it takes place, at least it starts, in the city of Seville. It seems as though the selection committee likes to move around the world and select books that are set in new and unique locations than they have chosen before. So I thought it was interesting that two books in a row started with the same city. So this is the story of Juan and his relationship with Diego Velasquez, the famous painter. We only know about Diego and any of his paintings and his personality as Juan experiences it. So having said that, let's get reading. Juan was born into slavery, not knowing his father. Mom died when he was a child, and he was taken under the wing of the mistress, who taught him to write so he could transcribe letters for her. He realizes very quickly that he is learning to read in the process. The plague kills many in Seville, including the mistress, and Juan is transferred to her nephew Diego, who is going to be a very famous painter at this point. He is not yet. Juan's job is to be to always be available to Diego, to help him with whatever paint preparations he needs. For example, Juan will be responsible for stretching the canvases, preparing the paints, and helping with the light. He once expressed an interest in painting himself, but the new mistress said it is illegal for slaves to learn the arts. Diego is called to the royal palace to be the royal painter, and they all move to Madrid. Peter Paul Rubens, another famous artist, visits Velasquez, and Juan falls in love with Mira, one of the slave girls in his entourage. Rubens and his company move on to Italy, but Juan is left with a nagging fear that he might be sold at some point in the future. Aside from not being able to paint, he says he has no complaints about being a slave until he started considering this new fear. The king orders Velasquez to Italy to paint his cousin, and to copy some of the masterpieces. Diego and Juan travel together. While there, Juan sells the earring he wears, which had been his mother's earring, in order to buy art supplies. Velasquez never taught him to paint, but Juan figures he has been exposed to enough art and wants to try his hand. He is frustrated when it doesn't go well. When they return to Spain, they learn Velasquez's daughter died while they were gone. Later on, they return to Italy. Then they come back to Spain, where Velasquez frees Juan and immediately hires him as an assistant. Juan gets engaged to Lolas, another slave who belonged to Velasquez's wife. The wife also freed Lolas, but hired her to stay as a nurse, as the wife has been in poor health and is close to death. She dies, then due to a broken heart and a lingering fever, Velasquez soon follows. Juan plans to return to Seville, but wants to say goodbye to the king first. The king realizes he was too late in conferring knighthood on Velasquez, but asks Juan to help him do it posthumously. This scene is depicted on the cover, with the king and the former slave working together to paint the cross of the knight onto Velasquez's only self-portrait seen in Las Meninas. The end. Overall, I liked this book. I didn't love it. I found it honestly pretty slow at times but it, it wasn't terrible it was a it was a nice historic biography one thing the author did that she did it at the very end and I wish she had done it at the start so at the very end she gives us a two three page afterward basically where she is writing through her methodology of writing this book and she admits that the book is fiction very, very loosely inspired by true events, which is to say that Velasquez was a painter, and at one point he had a slave named Juan, and that's pretty much it. He also painted Juan, which is uh, definitely one of the scenes in the book. It was just practice painting, working on the light, trying some new paints, showing off his portraiture techniques. So the author took the existence of this painting and created an entire story around it, which is okay. I'm totally fine with that. 
I just wish that the afterword had been a foreword so we knew going into it that how little was actually history. I didn't really think it was super closely tied to history or accurate representation and that's okay. I, I was I was completely fine with a very loosely inspired event. I do like Velasquez. He is one of my favorite, favorite painters and in particular his painting Las Meninas is pretty much my favorite painting. So what I thought was curious and a little disappointing is at no point in the book does it mention the Velasquez working on this painting. We find out that he is the painter, the royal painter, the painter of the king and his family. And that's it. And then at the very end, they add the cross to the painting. It's, there's absolutely no in between. We don't know what's going on story wise when he does this painting. We don't know how it's received, at least Juan's perception of how it's perceived. Probably my favorite part, actually my absolute favorite part, is the very end, the scene that we have on the cover where the king and Juan are working together to put that cross on Diego's jacket. We, this is the only self-portrait that is known to exist, so I thought it was really sweet that it, even if he wasn't conferred knighthood in his life, that they could posthumously do it and forever mark this painting to show that he had been granted knighthood by the king. So overall, it was a sweet story, maybe a little dry, but I didn't hate it. Unfortunately, I don't really know many students who would like this book. Perhaps if someone is really into biographies or really into Spanish art, they might like it. I see over 180 students a day, and I, I really don't know a single one of them who would like this book. So that is unfortunate. I, it was, I, I liked it enough. I don't know that I would read it a second time, but I thought it gave a very pleasant interpretation of Velasquez. It, it's, it reminds me a lot of Amos Fortune Freeman, that it acknowledges the existence of slavery, but it's a super sanitized version where the slaves are treated very, very humanely and nothing bad really happens to them, which I certainly hope was true in Juan's case. We, we don't really know for sure. I thought the author did a fine presentation. She really presented... Diego as getting or inheriting a slave from his aunt and not really knowing what he needed him to do. So he just immediately started treating him like an assistant, more so with uh, teaching him the art skills, the how to make paint, how to stretch canvases, all of that. I liked that Diego had so much time in the studio, so he was able to learn just by being around the art that was happening and just seeing what was happening. So I feel like I'm rambling at this point. It was a perfectly fine book. Unfortunately, if you ask me again in two or three years, I'm probably not going to remember too much of it, but I really like the cover. So there's that. I like covers that give us a good idea of what the book is about. So I really like this cover. I think the cover artist did a great job. I think the artist did a fine job. If I were to give this a score, it would probably be maybe like an eight, maybe a seven. It, it wasn't actively bad. The next book is called Up a Road Slowly by Irene Hunt. It is another story of a child growing up. So I'll get to that one in a couple days. Thanks for watching. Bye.